So today we're going to talk to you about the Humanoid Rehabilitation Project. I'm Ricardo Lasso. That's Angel Mendoza, Gilbert Solis, and Giancarlo Drago. So to begin with, I want to talk to you about the difficulties that pediatrics face while doing rehabilitation for children. Now, rehabilitation for children differs in many ways from adults, mainly in the fact that children are not the same size as adults and do not share the same limb sizes. Now this becomes troublesome for a uh, adult to demonstrate on a kid how to do certain movements. To add to that, some children also tend to avoid interactions with the adults who may be the physical therapist or sometimes even the parents due to developmental issues such as autism. Now, for the, cho for the children, these tasks may be new ones that they've never learned before. And sometimes, like things that seem so simple as walking, when a child doesn't know how to walk, uh, has been getting through without walking, does not feel the need to walk, he will most likely not be interested in learning how to walk. Now, our primary focus in this project is to create a robot that will serve as an inexpensive platform to help rehabilitation, while at the same time making therapy accessible to children with so social interaction issues. Our robot is going to serve two primary functions. The first one is going to be to um, be a visual model for the child. We want the child to mimic the behavior the robot exhibits. The second is to serve as an intermediary between the child and the physical therapist. This is going to allow us to relieve social uh, pressure which physical or social interaction with that child may produce. Uh, the robot presents a couple clear advantages over other forms of therapy or other tools in therapy. Uh, Children are visual learners, so producing a, a model which is visually similar to them will allow them to learn a movement easier. The uh, Children tend to also have shorter attention spans than adults who have maybe more discipline. So we need to make, uh, we need to place a design focus on engaging the child aesthetically, like with lights or sounds, things that will grab his attention and hold it. Um, in addition, the different disabilities that the child has may need to be incorporated into the robot for identification and for um, just that comfort level the child may be able to have with it. And this will help that intermediary role occur. So there's a couple of projects which already exist and are open source, which are serving as a basis for us. Um, the Poppy Project, Autobot, and Cherry Project in particular. Autobot and Cherry Project are two robot projects which place an emphasis on using robots to socially to interact with children who may be socially isolated in hospitals. Um, Autobot performs a similar function. Poppy Project is an anatomically correct um, scalable model which we tend to or we, which we intend to um, use as a basis for movement design. So in its essence we are trying to create a robot which will take the movement abilities of the poppy but will incorporate the social appeal and accessibility that the other projects include. We have divided our design process in two stages. First is um, our prototype part and then is our final design. For the prototype part, we are using the Arduino Mega two LCD display, one MP3 module, and some servo motor that will generate the movements of the joint. As today we have, this This is our CAD model of today, and here we can see how the, the servos were set up to simulate the joint movement to be anatomically correct. Here at the bottom we have the layout of the wiring for the servo motor that will serve as, as the joint. And on top we have some eye emotions that we were able to generate through the coding process. For global awareness, we want to cut down the price. Our closest human art project to ours is around $8,000. We want to bring it down to at least 1000 by cutting down prices on the server motors, the Arduinos, and 3D printing. Another advantage is that we can take for kids, have them do therapy at the house. You get multiple hours that you can't get at the therapy just because 
therapy costs, sometimes insurance doesn't cover it, so we have that advantage to us. <coughs> Another thing that we can do is open source. We can leave that code out for anybody, just like it was open for us, if they want to customize it, because a lot of children aren't there, aren't the same as another children that you might want that. For possible functions that we want in the future, we want to do Bluetooth or wireless on connectivity to your cellular devices. Another thing is a possible feedback reaction, just because, you know, let's say I want to push my robot, the robot is going to push back, just have a more humanoid feel. The last thing we want to do is a voice recognition, sit down, stand up, or roll over, whatever you need. Thank you so very much.